Hello again, everyone. I thought I was done with the Warcraft 3 campaign, but then I had a sudden brilliant idea that I had to test out for a chapter much later on, uh, the final chapter of the Undead campaign, which is another one of these difficult survival chapters that Warcraft 3 does so well. I think my idea will make it possible to take out all three of the gigantic enemy bases on hard mode. We'll see. This will be my first time putting it in action. Hmm. You know, I don't think I remember there being a teal enemy base. Maybe they changed the color in-game. Once again, if you haven't played Warcraft 3, you're kind of being dropped into the middle of the story. This is the end of the Undead campaign. Basically, we're trying to hold out until we can summon some giant demons to complete an invasion of the human kingdoms. Kel'Thuzad there has been our mage hero up until this point, and Arthas, who has turned evil, has been basically the same as he was as a good guy, only now for the Undead. Dramatic irony. Tychondrus is the third type of undead hero, called a Dreadlord. Unfortunately, neither he nor any other Dreadlord is ever playable in the campaign, which is unlike all the other races' campaigns where you get to try out all of their heroes at least once. I guess in the expansion they give you kind of a Dreadlord, but even he only has half normal Dreadlord skills, so even that doesn't really count. The first thing to do is to kill this necromancer so my population drops into no upkeep. That will increase my gold income by almost 50%. Next, I'm going to drop a bunch of items to free up Arthas's inventory. My idea revolves around that. I have a bunch of shade units, which are only good for scouting. I want to kill off most of them to free up population space. Next, I'm going to build some ziggurats, which are like combined houses and towers, to defend two key points. The enemy likes to attack from those sides. I'm going to order this shade back into town so I can kill it with a tower. I'm actually going to unsummon this Temple of the Damned, a rare and I think clever move. That deletes the building, but gives me back half of its cost as gold and wood. I also built a second graveyard, which let me do upgrades twice as fast and also will help with wood harvesting. I'm moving my acolyte peasants toward my next gold mine. Then Arthas blitzes down this archmage guarding some treasure, and I have my acolyte, which is like a peasant, claim that gold mine, so now I have two sources of gold. We will indeed make good use of those landmines they just mentioned. I'm ordering my shades to scout out the three enemy bases, and then hold position near towers that will soon be able to see and then destroy them. Arthas gets some spectacular tanking items. I'm going to order the Crypt Fiends, which are the spiders that are kind of like powerful archers, to move south to defend one base side on their own. Meanwhile, Arthas gets separated out to go claim all of those four goblin landmines. Perfect, that shade died, which freed up just enough population space for me to get one more ghoul to increase my wood harvesting rate. I'm going to upgrade my ziggurat houses into their tower form. I built extras, both for more firepower and to have spares when some get destroyed. And I'm going to upgrade my town center into a black citadel, the final upgrade. Kind of like aging up in Age of Mythology. I finished my first armor upgrade, but I can't quite afford the second one yet. I'm also hoping the humans will unlock the ability to see and kill my shades soon, to free up more population room for another ghoul. Meanwhile, Arthas is maneuvering around to pick up all those landmines and then ignore the useless enemy footmen. Now I'm about to have a two-front fight. There should be a wave from the east here that should be quite powerful, although it's slower than I expected. I think I have time to squeak in a graveyard upgrade before I have to start microing. Here we go. I need to focus fire both the crypt fiends and the towers on the same nights. Oh, that injured fiend is stuck, huh? Okay, I'll move the guy behind him out of the way. And run him over to that health fountain. That battle's under control. I need to switch my attention. Arthas is attacking an enemy base alone throwing down landmines around their town center. Perfect. They only have one upgrade. I calculated the timing and I was sure if I attacked right now they'd only have one of their building upgrades to make their buildings tougher, not two yet. I'm also throwing a spell to damage their archmage and need him dead fast. The landmines are going off in a weird order, but they're tearing down the castle and their army and their worker units too. It should take exactly six if they just have one upgrade. There we go. Okay, spam out some spells, tear down those two powerful knights. Phase 2 of my brilliant plan. I reanimate their guys and then use the usually worthless death pact ability to eat one of the knights, heal Arthas, and keep the pain train rolling. I'm going to send my crypt fiends west and oh wow, brilliant time and the enemy just showed up there. Perfect. I'll come in behind and wreck them. Meanwhile, laying down three more mines. This will destroy the altar that revives his archmage, and also a workshop that produces this base's favorite units. I killed all his peasants too, so we can never build back. Quick check to make sure the second front is going perfect. Okay, I'm going to manually blow up the mines. They don't hurt your own units, by the way. And I attacked both buildings enough that they should die. Perfection. Three minutes in and one enemy base is crippled forever. Since he can't repair anything, I'll soften up one of his towers before Arthas runs home. These reanimated units are about to expire, so I'll use Death Pack to eat another one for health. I expect an attack from the north next, so I'll move in position proactively. I am delighted by how well my plan went, so I'm going to save here. Alright, after that fantastic start, let's see if I can do this on my first try. My next clever idea starts with dropping all the gear that I'm carrying. 
I stockpiled a bunch of items on Kel'Thuzad last mission so I'd have a ton of stuff to sell this time. And I stayed at no upkeep so I can sell it for full price with no penalty. You don't want to lose 30% of your gold. Okay, I'm finally getting those shades killed by the enemy towers. A side benefit of this Ghoul Frenzy upgrade will help my lumber harvesting. And I'll keep up the military upgrades from both my graveyards, including now Unholy Attack as well as Creature Attack and Armor from before. Not Unholy Armor though. This is also the best chance to build the military structures I'll need in a couple of minutes. Ah, that shade did one last useful thing before dying and revealed the enemy wave is coming. Alright, sell, sell, sell! And then back to retrieve and sell two more consumable items that I don't think I'll need this mission. They're both normally great items, but here I think I need the money more, and I've got plenty of artifacts that are actually useful to fill up Arthas' inventory. Armor upgrades before attack, they're both mathematically better and they synergize well with Death Knight heals. I briefly pull back the Crypt Fiends so the enemies pursue and get hit by all the towers. Returning to the subject of armor. In Warcraft 3, every single point of armor basically makes each one of your hit points 6% better. And health regain from healing, of course, also benefits from that bonus. And if you crunch the numbers for big units, it's no contest. Armor upgrades help a lot more than attack. As a percent. Fantastic. It's been five minutes, so now we get a set of three free Fellhound Demons. And I mean free, they don't take up any food. I control group my production buildings for later use. Good for reinforcing yourself fast mid-fight. I think I'm going to move all my forces to the east. After what I did to the western base to ruin it, the eastern one has the most powerful waves left. Northern griffins are relatively easy to deal with. By the way, the Death Knight's heal ability also works on demons, just like undead, so that's fantastic. I'm still focusing on doing upgrades and researches rather than producing units so I can hoard the maximum amount of gold. Jumping straight from 40 food to 70 or 90 is the most efficient. I think I'm going to build one more ziggurat in the central location. I plan to hit the eastern base next and I want to have good defenses against northern waves in the meantime. Six upgraded ghouls on lumber. That's better than having 12 guys of any other race gathering. It'll really start rolling in. I'll do some quick maneuvers so that Arthas and the Fellhounds do the tanking. They're better at that than the spiders, of course. And of course, use both the towers and the Crypt Fiends to focus Fire Knights. Above all, do not lose your free demons. They are much too valuable. Better than any other unit dies. The demons cost no food and are irreplaceable. By the way, the reason for focusing the knights first is that they're weak to the damage type that I have, and they're the main enemy DPS. As in any RTS, keep managing your base even while battles are going on. Don't fall behind. I'll prioritize level 2 creature attack over level 3 unholy attack. It's a better buy for my army. Unholy strength, by the way, is just to power up the meat wagons that I'll use to destroy the enemy buildings. It won't help any of my other units. And unholy army doesn't affect meat wagons for whatever reason, so I ignore it completely. Alright, I've got about 3,500 gold and about 700 lumber. I calculate that should be about enough so that as units get produced and more income keeps rolling in, I'll have enough to build my army up to max. Let's go! Frostworms train so slowly in this version of the game that I think it's worth having three boneyards so you don't waste too much time on this time-limited map. At least if you're trying to crush all the enemy bases, otherwise time is a little bit less important. In the near future, I may want to start killing off some of my ghouls to make more food room for more units, but for now I still need that lumber income. I'm going to station my troops in the north for now, which is the most likely direction for the next attack, since either the north or the west base could hit it. My plan is to defeat- ah, there we go. Flying machines are pitiful against ground units, but they can shred air units or buildings. In general, the western base produces a lot of things that are good against your buildings, which is why I crippled them first. I'm sending in two of these ghouls to die now. Ah, that's unusual. Typically, the northern base only sends the Griffin Riders to attack the northern position. I wasn't ready for that. Griffin Riders are very strong, but they only deal about one-third damage to fortified buildings like mine. I'll take the next level of Death Pact, which is still usually pretty worthless. But all my other skills are already maxed out. Okay, there go those two ghouls, which makes room for one more unit. And I choose Frostworms. Definitely my favorite unit, and certainly very useful on this mission in particular. I can kill off one more ghoul, which will really hurt my lumber production, but let me build one more meat wagon, which should speed up my sieging of their bases. Grey could attack in the meantime, but Grey of course has the weakest waves because he sends mostly griffin riders, which as I mentioned are not good against my towers. 
During this relatively quiet moment, while I just try to work on getting out one or two more units and upgrades, I'd like to just say that I think this mission is really fantastic. The one thing I think could be better was if there was a side quest tempting you out of your base, like on Human 5. By the way, you can see that my gold income is really penalized by upkeep right now. Okay, I'm running everybody back out of that area of effect spell that their Archmage is creating. That hurt my formation though, I've got Arthas in the back and Crypt Fiends up front now. I'll have Arthas get in the old man's face and beat him like Charles Sumner. Hmm. Didn't make him stop the blizzard, but at least he was only hitting my towers, not my units. I'll have my Felhuns do a mass mana burn to set him up for an easy kill. There we go. Meanwhile, back at the base, I'll get that last meat wagon under production. I'll retask an acolyte to go repair buildings instead of collecting gold. Having everyone on gold is much less important in high upkeep because they don't really bring in much income anyway. So as long as you have a gold stockpile, repairing has a diminished opportunity cost. Alright, it's not a perfect opportunity, but I want to go in now while there's still some time on the clock to wipe out the other bases too. Nice, another three of those foe hounds. One of the great things about Frostworms for sieging bases like this is they have this great ability called Freezing Breath, where whenever they attack, they passively lock down the building they hit, preventing it from attacking or training anything for several seconds. So with some micro, you can lock down the entire enemy base and leave it helpless. The enemy has some sort of understanding of this, so they'll tend to attack my Frostworms as well as my Mortar teams. And I need to keep them from doing so and don't let those units die, because they are the core of my offense against these bases. By the way, Felhounds have a rare damage type called Chaos, which is equally effective against all types of unit or building armor. In relative terms, that makes them better than most units at taking down buildings, so I'll use my pack to do some of that. Oh, better pull them back before they take too much damage. Ah, I'll need to head these Crypt Fiends back home. Not Arthas, he can stay. Grey is targeting pretty much the one vulnerable point in my defenses where I have no towers that can help. Oh, had the meat wagons moving at the same time, so now there's a traffic jam. Well, in the meantime, with a bit of micro and some AI knowledge, I can probably lure these griffins back into my towers. If that acolyte goes up and starts healing the building, they'll probably attack the acolyte and then they'll follow him as he runs back toward my town center and tower. Oof, Frostworm took some damage. I better pull him back and get him healed. Multiple different battles going on makes it a little bit tricky to manage them all perfectly. I lost a Crypt Fiend, but that's kind of desirable, really. I would have started killing them off if I needed to. Four to five is sufficient now. I don't need six anymore. At this point, my Crypt Fiends play mostly a support role. They just break up enemy air formations so they can't swarm my Frostworms, but the Frostworms do the real damage to the air units. And four or five Crypt Fiends are enough to hunt down stray ground units, while the Frostworms are busy with more important stuff. This base really loves to make a lot of the unique human mechanical units that rarely see play in multiplayer in my experience. Good for anti-air, siege, and not much else. Hmm. Well, I intended to have two Crypt Fiends die, but I think three died instead because I wasn't paying attention at the critical moment. My timing is perfect to save this one, though. One of the things that I really like about Warcraft 3 is how within each race, as well as across the different races, there's such a huge variety in terms of the capabilities and feel of using and fighting different units. The human machine units like the Flying Machine and the Siege Tank are so different from you know, the human casters or knights and footmen and things like that, for example. Alright, this base can't mount any more active resistance, so I'll pull everybody except for the meat wagons back to town, and the meat wagons can finish it off. That's one out of three enemy bases down, so I take a moment here while I wait for the next wave to just check that my economy and my base are in order, and get everything squared away to make sure I'm back at full strength. My economy is doing pretty well, and despite cutting down my lumber ghouls and having high upkeep diminish my gold income, I still have a good stash of both just because I've lost so few units. My army will be a bit stronger with fewer Crypt Fiends, too. Aha! I'm getting Arthas in a great position to tank most of the hits. He's super good at that with his plus 8 armor. I see they have some Mortar teams, enough to take down my Ziggurats quite fast. Better send my Frostworms out to deal with those. Post-commentary note here, I didn't notice at the time how critically wounded one of my Frostworms was. I can't believe I lost it to this tiny wave. It's funny, I executed most of the difficult fights almost perfectly, but then the super easy one comes up and I lose a Frostworm. But that's perfectly fine. After all, I have this large buffer of gold and lumber, and it's easy for me to replace one of them. 
All because of my good economic strategy at the beginning, of course. Meat wagons are pretty slow, so I better start bringing them over now if I want to actually use them in time for the big fight. Perfect, here's the next enemy wave. And Arthas gives a large speed bonus to all allied units, including meat wagons, so he'll be perfect for ushering them in toward the next big fight with the eastern base. This spell Death Coil that I'm casting, by the way, is much like Holy Light in that it can heal for 600 or damage for 300. Strictly on the numbers, it's actually a little bit worse than Holy Light because it costs more and has a projectile time instead of being an instant cast, but you can damage non-undead things. So my objective now is to destroy the blue base, but it tends to have the most powerful and versatile standing army. If I fight them head on, I'm likely to lose a lot of units and therefore get slowed down in my advance. The solution is for Arthas to go on a commando raid with the last three landmines that are saved for this exact purpose. I'm going for speed rather than perfection of placement with the mines, and I'm going to try to kite around to keep as many of the enemies as possible standing on or near the mines. There goes one. They trigger either if killed or if someone steps on them after 10 seconds, by the way. There we go. I'll reanimate the dead, and then I'll eat one of the knights to fully heal Arthas. I think I'm demonstrating here what I said before about how valuable it is to have a hero who is really good at tanking and casting spells, and nothing else is really important in the campaign. The animate dead guys are invincible, by the way, which is not as helpful as it sounds because the enemy won't target them, and therefore they can't help tank. Alright, I can't allow those knights and whatnot to take out my meat wagons. The enemy loves to focus on those, and they're super slow and super fragile. I've got tons of mana, so I can just throw death coils at that problem. Get my meat wagons back into the action faster that way. I'll start spreading out my frost worms to lock down his altar and other buildings. I don't want to get them spread too thin and too deep into enemy territory and risk losing one, so I'm going to go for targets of opportunity rather than focus on the most important buildings in the base, wherever they may be. It's also still all hands on deck to take out anybody who looks like they might shoot the meat wagons. Besides dealing gigantic splash damage to ground units, frost worms also do a 10 second long cold effect on them, which slows them down greatly. What more can you ask for, really? Alright, I'm spreading them out and having them attack each important building that's in reach, and as enemy buildings die, I'll just retarget those frost rooms onto whatever new target of opportunity I can see. I think that's the most efficient way to tear down these giant bases you see in the campaign. Just in time with the micro to save that meat wagon. One of the other fantastic things about Arthas is that his Death Knight hero class gives regeneration to all units, including machines like meat wagons. Ah, the replacement frost worm showed up. Perfect. I think 6 is about the right number for this kind of base, really. More than that is fun, but I think you kind of get diminishing returns. You're better off with a combined arms force like I've got, where you've got some meat wagons, some crypt fiends to break up the enemy air force, and focus fire small targets, and frost worms for the big stuff. Arthas is also a particularly good helper for frost worms, by the way, because one of their biggest weaknesses is that they move very slowly, but he gives all nearby units a plus 30% speed bonus, which makes them respectably fast. This base doesn't really build much from their workshops, so I don't need to freeze it. In-combat repairs are very strong in this game, so I bet with some acolytes to back up the towers there can hold them off with minimal forces. I really want to keep my momentum, and you can see I have a giant stockpile of gold, so I really don't need to have the acolytes keep mining. The only two ways I could really lose at this point would be to lose momentum and therefore run out of time, or just to micro extremely badly in the initial confrontation with grey standing forces, I guess. But I'm a good player, so that's not going to happen. I might lose an Acolyte or two, Griffins do really high damage, but Acolytes are almost free to replace, so no big deal there whatsoever. Better to lose a couple of Acolytes than to lose that Spirit Tower that almost died. I don't think I'll need much more in terms of base defenses, because I now intend to take the fight to the last enemy, but they might still slip a wave through. I should keep something around to stop them. A couple of my units wandered off target unproductively while I was looking elsewhere, so I will just order them to attack move back through the enemy base and wipe out the last few straggling farms and whatnot. And then I recall there's a healing fountain north of the enemy base, so I'll order them all to attack move to there and that'll heal up everybody but the meat wagons. Yep, there's the fountain of health. Fantastically helpful for undead, because we're good at healing single targets with the death knight, but not multiple slightly injured people. One minor detriment to this very good map is that a lot of the fringe territory up north of the enemy bases, as we're about to start seeing, is very empty looking. It seems pretty clear they didn't spend a lot of time designing it and making it look like a realistic environment. Now, it is a defense mission, but they did give you all those shades that could easily see this. I'm going to try to take out all those towers on clips with frost worms and meat wagons, of course. My biggest worry right now is how badly injured my meat wagons are. If I don't micro them carefully, I could lose three of them in seconds. No 
one mortar team or cannon tower or blizzard or anything like that, basically. I'll just have to be vigilant. Speaking of which, I've often praised Blizzard maps for putting lots of hard-to-find secret goodies in different parts of their maps to really reward exploration in a way that most RTSs don't. I actually found a really cool secret up in this remote corner that I'm going to go claim soon. Aha! Uh -huh, there's part of the enemy air force. Ah, and their ground force too. Okay. This base is very strong, but a bit less varied than the blue one. Perfect. I managed to split them up as I hoped and lure them into an ambush. This is another situation where my small number of Crypt Fiend plus large number of Frostworm combination is very potent. You see, Frostworms actually do decreased damage to air units and don't have splash damage against air units. But while webbed, Griffins count as ground units. Excellent, here come more Griffins for the slaughter. I'm taking a moment here to ponder how to safely move in my meat wagons. If I advance, I'm likely to lose meat wagons to stray Griffins because the Frostworms need to head into the northeast corner with Arthas and therefore can't be there to help the meat wagons and bail them out. Still, I need to press the attack before I send another wave. I'm hopeful that some of the guys that I killed were the wave, and therefore he won't attack for a little while, but I don't want to count on that. And... uh-oh. Not only is it a really big wave, but it's not all griffins. That's bad. And I'm fighting on three fronts now. I'd better have Arthas go all in to take out this Archmage fast so I can get everyone back together. The most important thing right now are the meat wagons, and they're mostly defenseless while the Frostworms and Arthas are up here. The base is less important than the meat wagons, really. And I really want the treasure from this box. Ah, I get some timely Ultra Demon reinforcements at the 10 minute mark. I'd hope to use them to obliterate Gray's base, but they'll do a good job of defending mine, too. They're called Infernals, by the way. When it comes to brute force melee damage, they're pretty much the biggest, baddest thing in the game. They're helpless against air units, though, so I want to find a way to bait the Griffin Riders into my towers. So, some wacky hijinks happened here. Warcraft ran fine, but NVIDIA mangled 28 seconds of video. Audacity got in on the fun by dropping not 28, but 23 seconds of audio. Since not much happened in that time, and since I wanted to show my glorious first play of this strategy, rather than a refined second attempt, I've recovered the file as much as I could and will keep it as is. The main thing that happened was I got a 3-use mind control staff. In a major power move, I've just stolen the enemy's air force. Took some quick clicks to get away with that. I micro the fragile meat wagons back for a second while using Arthas to kill that footman. And a bit of base management to let my black citadel take down the griffin riders. Not perfect, but what I wanted to show here is my first go with this clever new strategy rather than a refined, perfect attempt. Time to focus down their archmage. Now, they just revived that guy, so he came back with very little mana. Which means I couldn't just nuke him into the ground with mana burn from all my fellhounds, unfortunately. I'm going to break their resistance here, and then start locking down more and more of their buildings with my frost worms. Then meat wagons move in to destroy them, and Arthas and the Crypt Fiends keep the footmen off the meat wagons. The surviving griffins that I stole are a good pick for that too, because as I mentioned, they're not very good at damaging buildings. Meat wagons are safe, so I go back to ordering my frost worms to target various buildings and lock down more and more of the base. During this relative lull, I'd again like to praise the balance of this mission. Blizzard did a great job of making this mission feel grand and epic by giving you all the toys you could want. Two mines, frost worms, whatever undead units you want, powerful artifacts all around the map, free giant demon allies, and they struck a balance where the mission is very challenging, but still totally feasible with conventional play done well. Hmm, I think I see some corpses Arthas can reanimate. A pretty weak army all in all. You can't reanimate dead air units or heroes, and the enemy didn't have very many strong ground units, so I don't get very many good reanimated guys. Alright, I'm freezing this and that, I'm locking down more of their bases I move in. Despite my meat wagon starting off critically injured, I've been able to keep most of them alive through this. Oh, I've missed a cannon tower I need to freeze before it blows them up. Alright, problem solved. I'm gonna have this frost worm go up and scout around their base a little bit. See what else needs to be frozen to prevent any further complications. I'm going with that guard tower. Mostly so it doesn't hurt on the isolated frost worms. There we go, things are under control here. I'll look back at the base and start another meat wagon going. As a note, I noticed that back in their base they have an arcane sanctum, but they're not currently using it to produce anything. As I've alluded to in this mission, the AI is somewhat specialized. The western guys mostly produce machine units and riflemen, the top base does almost exclusively griffin riders, and the right base does mixed casters and ground units. 
all of them throwing in more and more knights as the mission goes on. You might have noticed that they don't even try to begin reviving their heroes immediately when they die. That rigidity is probably a good game design choice, though. I've pointed out that it makes for a lot of variety in the kind of enemy waves that you need to fight. Each of the three main types of waves will tend to hit one of two different entrances each. So that gives you some idea what to prepare for, but doesn't let you get complacent either. They also did a good job of amping up the difficulty gradually, but quickly enough to matter. In a badly designed survival chapter, if you win through the first few minutes, the game is basically in the bag. Or only the last two minutes matter. But in this mission, at least on hard mode, you really are facing a pretty high but manageable threat level most of the way through the mission. I won't claim it's perfectly balanced by any means, but I would say it is a good one and better than most RTSs I've played. I would even say it's better than most of Warcraft 3's other defense missions. As much as I love Human 5 from my previous video, I will concede that most of the time the player won't really lose that mission. Their giant waves at the end might overwhelm your defenses, but they won't have time to destroy your base unless you already had lost pretty much everything before they showed up. So they might feel overwhelming to a beginner, but it is a pretty easy mission to actually scrape through in the end. Which I would say is fine for the first campaign. Here on the grand finale of the second campaign though, things are much more difficult, as they should be. Side note, check out my Arthas here. He has 3,000 effective hit points and he can cast spells all day. Building up monsters like him is another thing that makes the Warcraft 3 campaign so satisfying. Well there we go, they even thought of triggering things to end early if you wipe out the enemy bases. Nicely done, Blizzard. After making this video, by the way, I looked around and found a video of someone beating it on the reforged version on hard mode. It looks like they really made it a lot easier in the remake, unfortunately. Two particularly huge buffs were giving the player plus 10 food capacity, and giving the player an item called Warsong Battle Drums, which are overwhelmingly powerful on a big army mission like this. So I'm glad I played it the original hard way. I'm proud of that idea I came up with, and all the little embellishments and expansions to it that turned it into a tremendous victory like that. Definitely a fun way to play the mission. It is a shame they didn't give you a Dreadlord of some sort to play on this mission so you could try them out. Maybe they could have made it a side quest, where you need to go out of your base to go recruit him somewhere. That could have been a lot of fun. Like the challenge of killing the caravan on Human 5. Still, as I've said, a few possible improvements notwithstanding, I think this is a fantastic mission. One of the best in Warcraft 3, and therefore one of the best in any RTS I've played. This has got to be a joke. What happens to us now? Be patient, young Death Knight. The Lich King foresaw this as well. You may yet have a part to play in his grand design. As some of you who have been following my Age of Mythology videos know, I have my own grand design of sorts. For several years now, I've been working on a Warcraft 3 map called the Vaults of Manatomar. It's a tactical RPG with a focus both on story and on challenging gameplay. I filled it with secrets to find, lore to uncover, and lots of unique units to try out in different combinations. I'm quite proud of it, and all my playtesters said it was a lot of fun. So if you have Warcraft 3 and it sounds like your kind of map, by all means check it out and let me know what you think. Well, one of my favorite plays of one of my favorite missions. Let me know if there's a particular map or mission you'd like to see me play. I might do it. Have a great day everyone!